Wisconsin and Oregon State. Ooh, that should be an interesting should game. Should be a really good game. And I was so impressed with Wisconsin's offense. And, again, I, I, I know what they're playing in UNLV. Mm-hmm. But Russell Wilson, Adam, you've been around me. You've heard me sing the praises of this kid. And, and when Russell Wilson transferred from North Carolina State to Wisconsin, I said right then and there, they're my Big Ten preseason champions. That's what they are to me because I, I think that kid's so good. But if you look at Wisconsin's defense, man, they got issues. I mean, UNLV was shoving it down their throat. They have issues they need to get worked out. That's what really stood out to me last week when Wisconsin played UNLV is not the freakish, you know, a guy breaks loose and gets a 50-yard gain. It's these sustained drives yeah. from a team that should not be sustaining drives against you with any regularity. Well, I'm anxious to uh, watch the film, and uh, I will take a hard look at it and see whether it's susceptible. And, and to me, I imagine because – UNLV is not better man for man. There were some schematic errors on the defensive side, a lot of mental errors, and I'm sure those will be corrected. But they're they're a good football team. I know you watched a lot of football week one. We talked about LSU when we talked on Wednesday. Who else stood out to you? You, know, you talked about boys. We talked about Robert yeah, Griffin. Who yeah. else stood out to you in what you saw, what you've read, what you've seen since then? Well, let's let's go behind the obvious candidate. I thought Maryland looked good on Labor Day mm-hmm. against Miami. Miami has some issues and. They'll be better when Ohio State goes down to Florida. But to me, I mean, Northwestern's win at Boston College, that's a big win for them without Dan Persa. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's a big win for Northwestern. I thought they were, they were good. Uh, the Big Ten as a whole, I thought, performed pretty well. You have uh, Indiana, of course, getting beat <laughs> by Ball State. I believe was that I think I'm correct on that. <laughs> yes. I just know they got beat. We got beat by Ball State, 27, 21. It's embarrassing. You know, I think your goods are your goods, but there's there's a lot of good teams and and there's a lot of parity in college football, and I'm looking forward to watching the season I'm playing. By the way, Oregon State, who's playing the game that I'm doing, Wisconsin, got beat by Sacramento State, and I'm embarrassed. I didn't know. I thought Sacramento State canceled football. Apparently, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't invoke Title IX yes, yet. No. They're at Sacramento State. <laughs> Joined in studio by Chris Spielman and Spielman on Sports here on 97.1 The Fan. The Buckeyes have game number two tomorrow as they take on Toledo. It's a little bit of a step up in the MAC. Toledo's a team that will probably compete for the MAC title this yeah. year, where Akron is a team that's you know still got a fledgling coach, Ionello, in his second year, and they're coming off that 1-11 and season. So the competition's not going to be Nebraska or Wisconsin, right. but it's going to be a little bit better, which is kind of what you want. I- exactly, and I think the, the schedule sets up perfectly. Uh, for Luke and the Buckeyes and for this reason I mean you had an opponent that you should have and you did dominate in Akron now you want to step up the competition as you as you start getting ready for the Big Ten schedule and in fact of course going to Miami then Colorado coming in and so Toledo is going to provide more of a challenge offensively they're going to they're going to provide a little bit more of a challenge for the defense I mean they're experienced they have a quarterback returning they can toss the ball around the rock uh, they believe in themselves. They see themselves as potential MAC champions. And what better way to make a statement than to come into Ohio Stadium and knock the Buckeyes off? All right. From week one, Buckeyes to week two. Uh, we talked on Wednesday. There wasn't a lot that went wrong. But what can get better? What What do we want to see this week to ensure you know our optimism going to Miami in another week? Well, I think the offensive line needs to continue to get better and improve. And I expect them to be able to run the football. That's the one thing that concerns me a little bit is that uh, they had success against Akron. Boy, you want to see that success, success sustained. The only problem is, is how you know they're getting better is if the fact that you have Toledo, who's got some players, mm-hmm. that Toledo now can game plan and see what Ohio State's going in this direction so far this year and what their philosophy is. They also understand, Toledo, that number 11 for the Buckeyes is a pretty big target, so there's certain st- things scheme-wise that you can run to try to take him away if you do that. Then you're asking your receivers to step up. And don't forget, we have a young group of receivers and a young receiving core. So I would like to see those guys step up and the quarterbacks get them involved as much as they could. It's got to be interesting from week one to week two because now your tendencies are right there on film. Now everybody knows. Because before they didn't know kind of Luke Fickle and what he was going to call, what Joe Bowserman was capable of doing or Braxton Miller. Now it's right there in plain view. Now it's about, you know, guarding against it, defending it, figuring it out. But at least it's there for you. It is. It gives you a little bit of perspective and it gives you a, a perspective on personnel. Like, I'm sure Toledo knew that Jake was a, a big target, but they didn't know how dangerous he can yeah. be, especially in the red zone. I mean, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I am forced that if Ohio State's in the red zone, I know where number 11 is, 
I'm going to make sure that I have some type of coverage, either bracket coverage or the best type of matchup or jam him up at the line of scrimmage or do something because I know he's a target. But the other thing that people never think about is that the luxury that Ohio State had was that when you're playing Akron, you keep things in the vest too. That sure. you don't, no pun intended, but you keep, <laughs> you keep things hidden that you don't have to show. Then you bring out a little bit more each week. Absolutely. Chris Spielman against Spielman on sports here on the Buckeye Show on 97.1 The Fan. It's also NFL opening weekend. Yeah. We had the Packers and the Saints last night, but the full slate of games this Sunday. But now, now it really gets into full gear. Yeah, it does. And uh, I think it's great. I, I'm glad the NFL was able to work through its issues and everybody seems to be, to be happy. You know, I'm just, I, I kind of marvel at the, the power of uh, Roger Goodell. And we didn't talk about this earlier in the week, but I think it's it's interesting how Coach Trussell receives a seven-game suspension. Isn't that crazy? From the commissioner, and, uh, and Coach Trussell's a consultant. So I don't know how he can quite do that, but he did it. And and I and that being said, I mean, if Terrell Pryor is going to serve a suspension, and I think it uh, maybe it legally it might not work, but I think Coach agrees that you know he wants to set an example and, and maybe uh, – go in and honor what the commissioner wants. Who do you like in the NFL this year? Who are some teams for us to watch? Well, obviously the Packers. I mean, Aaron Rodgers to me is is top three quarterbacks, if not, and I, I don't have any problem saying this, if not the best guy in, in the NFL right now. Colts without Peyton Manning, and I'm really concerned about Peyton's career because I know what that neck thing can be, and if it's nerve damage, if that nerve ever comes back, you can't ever discount the Patriots. And I think Chad Ochocinco is going to be a perfect fit in New England. I really do. I think he's going to set the world on fire up there. Uh, so I like the Patriots. The Jets are always fun to watch. Cleveland, uh, the best way I can describe Cleveland is I'm optimistic. 8-8, eight 9-7. Eight, and seven. Cincinnati, I'm pessimistic. So we're looking at 4-12 and 12 or 6-10. and 10. But uh, your usual suspects, Dallas should be better. I'm looking for Dallas to be a good team. The Vikings can be a surprise, and everybody's talking about the Detroit Lions, but I would hesitate to jump on the Lions bandwagon because of, you know, they did some good things in the preseason but because we don't know, and it was preseason. It was basically an extended uh, practice more so than ever. But if Stafford can stay healthy, I think the Lions maybe uh, – have the potential to have the best defensive line, pure pass rush in the National Football League. It's a tough division, too, for Detroit, oh, right? yeah. as, as you certainly know. All right, let's end with uh, two quick personal notes. And uh, first, we didn't mention it on Wednesday, but young Spielman, he was performing under the uh, under the bright lights earlier this week. Is that what yeah, I saw on TV? Yeah, I saw he got a nice hit in there on the quarterback. Yeah. Has to, has to make Dad happy. It did. I had a tear in my eye. <laughs> there, no, I think yeah. – uh, you know, we talked about that. And he was so excited to play in, uh, in Ohio it Stadium. had to be so cool. And and it was it was fun for not only him but all his teammates mm-hmm. and our whole community of Upper Arlington and and I know that my daughter was in the student section all painted up and I had my two little ones there and it's exciting it's something that uh, we embrace and it was fun for those kids and I was I was glad they got a win and I was glad he had the opportunity to play absolutely all right and then your reality show Rise Up not your reality show your your TV show yeah. I should say Rise Up what I know you've mentioned it several times September third. Seven o'clock on ESPN, September thirteenth, and the opening segment, which will have a more interest to, I think, hopefully in the state of Ohio, is where we went down to Wellston, Ohio, and did our thing. And what it is is basically, I don't want to describe it like this, but it's the closest thing that uh, people can relate to. It's kind of an extreme home makeover for high school, so sure. I think people will enjoy it. All right, so we'll talk more about that on Tuesday. Thank but you. just so people want to get it in their DVRs now, in case they're going right. to be out or anything else, this Tuesday. 7 o'clock on ESPN Rise Up with Chris Spielman. And uh, they did a lot of good work. You did a lot of good work on the show. I know you had a lot of supporting cast as well. Yeah, absolutely. did a lot of good stuff. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. All right. Have a good weekend. Good luck calling the game. Wisconsin-Oregon State. What time is that game tomorrow? Noon. Noon kickoff. So another early one for you tomorrow. You got it, brother. All right. Looking forward to it. We'll see you Tuesday. See you.